the thing that I'm I've kind of come to the conclusion that maybe no one will ever come forward. But as a community, if if all Kurt Cobain fans would come together and maybe just try to get his death certificate changed from to undetermined, I think that would be in itself a little bit of justice. That's you know all we saying? called for in both our books. That's what we asked for, right? We we just asked that the um, that the case be reclassified, and right, and I think that's a reasonable. It would be nice if Frances Bean would call for that, right? I think she's the you know. At one point, there was hope that she would, you know, she was estranged from her mother. Um, there were rumors that she had heard about these these theories, and that she had taken them seriously at one point. And yet that doesn't seem to be, that seems to be a non-starter. She's, uh, uh, she seems very to be on terms with her mother again, or relatively as, as good terms as anybody's ever going to be with, with Courtney, given all her drama. And well, unfortunately, um, Francis didn't end up succumbing to addiction herself. And for a period of time, Courtney, Courtney's goon, Sam Lutfi, was supplying Francis. I've read their text messages from yeah. court documents. Uh, it's very apparent that Sam Lutfi was uh, Francis's supplier through Courtney. So but I there's all the divorce. There's all the divorce drama and all yeah, that. Stuff. And, we, and that's that's a red herring, right? I, yeah. I get I get contacted, you know, once every couple, two or three weeks, by people asking me questions about the case and. And they'll always bring that up and people seem to have hope. Oh, there's new evidence. And oh, Rosemary believes that her son might have been murdered, right? I, I, I believe that's a complete red herring and that that is one of many red herrings that sort of cloud the, fa the real facts of the case. I don't blame well, I... people for sort of seizing on it and saying, oh, look, this gives new hope to the case, right? But yeah. I'm, I'm incredibly skeptical. Yeah. I haven't seen anything uh, that convinces me that that's a significant breakthrough or development yeah i was kind of more suggesting that uh, i i've seen people and they're in the grips of addiction and a lot of uh important things can get sidelined when you're an addict and especially if someone's supplying you right. you know the, all these other things seem unimportant this is my but again main... you understand that right like so you understand yeah. that more than even me and tom grant right because you have that it's it's clear that you have that sort of background. You've known I, I've people seen in it. Those circles and you've seen it. And it's important to have that insight because then you realize what goes on and and, and how there's constant drama and constant yeah. lies. So and, what we really need to hope for is that, uh, and Francis is being very, very quiet. What we need to hope is that she matures and, and wants to live a sober life and, and maybe then she'll... Uh, question some things again you know maybe, maybe it'll come back around i have not lost hope max <laughs> i've not lost yeah. hope yet that they'll do the right thing and change his death certificate i mean you're still you're still own. doing the show right so clearly you're you're keeping you're helping keeping it alive right i've emerged i try in years i don't really follow it that closely you know a lot more about the the facts or the current state of the investigation tom grant's obviously still plugging away yeah yeah he and still, still has a lot it. of this supposed evidence that he has i don't believe he has a smoking gun in among all those tapes and evidence i yeah i'm still skeptical right now. i put him to the test i taunted him after the 2020 election when, when all this stuff you know the election uh, trump's big lie was circulating and i i was wondering whether whether he was a uh, whether he swallowed that right i put him to the test i've been taunting him for 25 years about his politics and he immediately dismissed the the election fraud stuff he was he was a little embarrassed right he probably did vote for trump maybe even twice but because he's a christian conservative republican not because he's some crazy trump supporter right there is a right. distinction you know i mean this yeah, guy, a big I, distinction i think a lot of people don't realize and this is what was going on in that era too kurt cobain is credited with helping bill clinton get elected to the white house he was a huge Clinton supporter, and he sort of rallied this generation of young people to yeah. go out and vote for that, that normally wouldn't vote, right? So credible political analysts credited Bill Clinton, uh, credited Kurt for helping Bill Clinton get elected in 1992. I'm, I'm constantly taunting him and saying, Tom, 
<laughs> you're you're an up bar. How how are you helping these people? You know, bring the like. You know, the uh, Hillary Clinton called it the vast right wing conspiracy. So here I am calling, you know, saying, Tom, you're you're participating in the vast right wing conspiracy. And, and you know, and we have fun with it. Right. I, I respect him, even though he politically he, he stands well, for everything I, I I'm against. But also our opposites. <laughs> Also, everything that that Kurt Cobain was against. Right. Kurt Cobain was a huge. Pro he was, you know, I wouldn't call Kurt Cobain a liberal. He was a progressive. Uh, Chris Novoselic was a liberal Democrat for years. Yeah, he yeah. Went, you know, he went beyond the. It, 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 it's it's very. I, sad. I think a lot um, of that Chris. actually. Um, Shelley, Chris' wife, had a lot of influence on his political ideas. Well, when he was sober and and in his right mind, he was he was kind of a smart guy, right? He was. Uh, I always always felt like he he knew what he wanted to say, but he could not articulate it. Right. You know, like he understood it, but he just couldn't. Yeah, I mean, he had some pretty serious issues, right? But you know, I like. And he, he drank a lot, yeah. Well, no, he had he had some serious addiction and mental health issues, right? Where you know the mental health stuff is now really coming to the surface. Unfortunately, it's very sad. But he was also much closer to Kurt than than somebody like Dave Grohl, who wasn't that close with Kurt at all. Right? right. Were, you you could never say that Dave Dave and Kurt were ever friends. And I, I don't think Kurt particularly liked Dave, although he had a lot of respect for him as a musician. I don't uh, think it's any friends, coincidence or... that you know Dave Grohl said, you know they they lived together for a, a period of time in Olympia in this tiny apartment and Dave Grohl said Kurt Cobain taught me a lot about writing songs Dave Grohl goes on to write hit after hit after hit so I don't think it's any coincidence like he was already talented right and then being sort of mentored and tutored by Kurt Cobain just propelled him you yeah know? I mean it's like Paul McCartney and John Lennon you know yeah and and George Harrison being there on the periphery and never being taken seriously and then he leaves the Beatles and he ends up becoming an incredibly prolific and successful songwriter on his own right it's not a coincidence i, I don't want to go down another uh road here because we would talk about it forever but don't you think it's weird that there have been a lot of musicians that once they sort of start to um what's the word i'm looking for influence politics they end up dead <laughs> like that's a whole conspiracy that, that's, go that's going through a <laughs> real rabbit hole and, yeah. and you no, know, I don't think that that's uh, that's related at all. Certainly, oh, okay. Um, but you know, it is important that you have to realize that when Tom was starting to do his his uh, his accusations against Courtney, a lot of these people around Courtney and Kurt and the music industry and Danny Goldberg, all these people, you know, saw this like right wing conservative Christian who stands for everything Kurt's against. And they definitely were wary of him, understandably. I was wary of him, right? And yeah. and they're, you know, thinking he's he he's got some sort of ulterior motive to try to bring down Courtney. Courtney, again, you know, we have to remember she was a very well respected figure in the music industry, not as a person, but in the music industry. And and obviously Nirvana was and all the people around her, Nirvana, but they were all staunch. Democrats, right? Like they were incredibly uh, associated with Democratic Party politics. Yeah, Kurt was a Democrat. Chris Novoselic was certainly a very uh, strong Democrat in Washington State. Yeah, and Tom Grant coming in and and trying to bring down Bill Clinton, right? So if anything, it's it's that it's it's the the suspicion of somebody like Tom. And uh, the understandable reluctance to take him seriously or to give him any credibility whatsoever, right? If he had not been that that person, maybe his accusations would have gone a little further. Maybe the music industry wouldn't have been so quick to write him off. To dismiss him. It's, it's unfortunate, right? Because it really did cloud the case. I, I think people don't understand that, you know, 25 years later, what was going on at, at that time, right? I just remember having fun taunting Tom, <laughs> but I never held his politics against just, him. He just never just picking on him, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, uh, I, I respect what all you guys did. I wouldn't even have a channel if it wasn't for your investigations. It was never my goal to uh, sort of be a spokesperson to keep this case alive. It just kind of happened. I was really propelled by his fans just kept saying, write another one, write another one, you know? 
um, I try to give everybody credit where credit is due. And um, but I would say that I think the best coherent uh, investigation was done by you and Ian. Like I said, I respect a lot of these like these young sleuths that are, you know, amateur detective, but they're going into, you know, and your show is certainly you're you're, I guess, the most high profile figure now keeping this stuff alive. So um you know kudos to you right and who knows who who's who knows who will come after me i'm sure right. somebody else will come next i thought it was important to try to talk to the original people uh you know i'm letting you know if ian ever wanted to talk or anybody else uh, you know wanted to talk i'm more than willing to to <clears throat> have a conversation and try to keep it alive um man i was going to say something i forgot what it was yes here's here's my qualm i want to say this he has so many supporters and so many fans to this day and so many people who know that this guy was very obviously murdered, but they will not come under one group. If, if, if they all came under one group and they all, you know, fought for the same thing, I, I believe that his death certificate could be changed if a million people came together but it seems like there's just a lot of bickering, like this group doesn't like that group and their theories are different. And, you know, a lot of unnecessary little things that need to be. Yeah, I don't follow ignored. it that closely. I don't I don't know about the like, yeah. internal and, politics and, going on. I just know that. I don't even care I, if I have to join I somebody the else's group as long as everybody's yeah. in one group, you know. Yeah, no, they all. it seems like a, a pretty good community of people that just. They do have a common goal, which is, you know, justice for Kurt. Apparently, yeah. Courtney wrote a song. I don't believe she did that. That's just that's no, just there, there's right? there's no song. Yeah, I wrote but, a song making fun of these. But it's certainly a tribute, theories. like the fact that she she claims to be calling her song justice for Kurt. There was a longstanding, you know, group called Justice for Kurt Cobain. That's, I, that's I see that tribute. hashtag in a tribute my comments. To them. She's giving publicity to, to these people. She's giving publicity to it. it. Exactly. Right. So every so, now and then I see uh, hashtag whatever. justice for Kurt. And I didn't even know that it was a thing. Apparently it was a thing for a long time. And a, a, lot, of people, time, yeah. a lot of people joined that uh, website or group or right. whatever it was. And I often see it in my comments section. So yeah. now it all makes There's sense. There's a lot of know? good people involved in that. I don't see that bickering stuff that you're talking about. There's certainly conflicting. Well, that's theory. more on Facebook. That's more. Yeah, yeah that's that's where I see it, right? Because every once in a while I get invited to one of these groups and I never accept the invitation. But for three weeks, I see all the posts, right? And I'm like, okay. see them come up in my Facebook feed and say, oh, that's an interesting theory. A lot of red herrings and a lot of stuff that I know is not true, right? Just because I've. I I know Alan Ranch, I know El Duce, I know Dylan Carlson, I've spent time with these people. There's certain things that I know cannot be possibly true, but I understand why people believe this stuff, right? I understand yeah. why people watch El Duce name Alan Ranch in, in the movie and say, oh, oh, Alan Ranch must be involved, right? Unless you've actually spent time with Alan Ranch, you, you're not going to miss that. But you've helped, you've pretty... helped me uh, in my quest for what's what's true and what's not I, now you know i now know that alan wrench total goofball nothing to do with it and i also know dylan carlson was probably too much involved in his own addiction to even know what was going on around him you know so that's like two he's a very sweet guy you know when when he's coherent he's a very good musician and like he's he's pretty intelligent right it's just you know i saw that transformation from him being a sweet articulate guy who loved kurt and would never mm -hmm. have done anything to harm him to being completely spaced out after he shot up and and being incoherent right so but it's yeah. that same that junky culture you see that with courtney people that know courtney and have spent time with courtney get charmed by courtney right she's very intelligent yeah. very yeah. well spoken but she can also be a crazy lunatic right but again that's like she's not i don't think she's a junkie anymore but she's on all kinds of drugs right and and so a lot depends on what phase she's in and what what and, and i guess she has mental health issues as well but yeah yeah all that really respect her musically and that like her as a person right i know people that hate her so much cannot understand that but it's important to understand that stuff, right? And how well respected she still is, and how much of an influence she had on a generation 
of especially girls, young girls, and punk rock fans, and us too, right? We got a lot of hostility when we were going around. People, oh, how yeah. dare you say this about Courtney Love? Courtney Love is my inspiration. Courtney Love's my hero. And she had this huge, profound impact on all these people, just like Kurt did, right? Kurt had a much bigger impact on a, on a, a, a stronger community. But Courtney, it was very influential. And very beloved. Yeah, but the disdain the disdain for her comes from uh, people believe that she didn't really love Kurt. She just used him to get in right. to, to get that exposure, which could very well be true. You know, no, she, I understand the him. disdain. I just like it's. I, I'm just saying it's important I, for people to understand how many people genuinely uh, revere look up to her, her, and especially that album live through this right was hugely important and influential and it's seen like that so when she's you know makes the top 200 rolling stone there's a reason for that it's not because she's bought anybody off it's not because she's such a powerful figure it's because that album had such a profound impact on so many people in that generation even all this time later it's still having an impact right you know what courtney love told kurt loader about live through this she said well, I'm not psychic, but my lyrics are. <laughs> I think I just saw an interview her, with her, uh, you know, her new round of of craziness and talking about her new new music and justice for Kurt. And she says, you know, I, I, I'm a great poet. And again, like I saw her, you know, poems from when she's 15. She is a good poet, though, the lyrics. And she, that's all she's ever taken credit of. She didn't say, you know, she wrote all the music and that she was responsible for all the brilliance of Live Through This, right? She gives Eric Erland some credit. She gives Billy Corgan credit for Celebrity Skin, which is nowhere near as important. Well, for a while, she didn't. And eventually she did. Well, they clashed. They they, they clashed over who had, you know, who wrote this song. Well, he only wrote the da-na, na-na, na-na. But that's that's the biggest hit. (laughs) That that's the not that hit. uncommon, right? That's fairly a know, lot of musicians that, that goes do that. On in, 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 you're, you're a musician, right? More than me. So uh, I saw I saw like a video where it talked about you doing a drum cover, but I never actually clicked on it. So, yeah, uh, I've got a bunch of Nirvana. There's a whole playlist of uh, drum covers. Um, but I've you know I've been I've been playing this music since I was like 12, 13 years old. So it's right, you know. I didn't even know that Ian was a musician, you know, yeah. I, I would love. But that gave ever... him an insight, right? He was able to. Exactly. Paul Carlson, like I couldn't. You have that understanding as a musician, as somebody who knows that 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 scene and the drug scene and all that. So that gives you a certain uh, gravitas, right? When when pursuing this this case, right? I, I never had that, right? I was more behind the scenes and, and a fan. And I'm too old for I, Kurt Cobain to have influenced me. Who, were, who was you your know, influences when, when you were coming of age? What, what kind of music do you listen to? You know, I I love I love punk rock, but I also loved uh, classic rock because that's the, there was a rock radio station. There was no alternative radio station back then. So I listened to, you know, uh, well, D- I guess David Bowie. David Bowie. Would yeah, have man, who don't love but, David Bowie? But I also loved the Ramones and the Pistols. And, you know, so I, I was a punk rock fan. But by the time Nirvana comes along and gets popular, I'm very dismissive of that. My radio station, you know, played right. Nirvana before Nevermind and interviewed him and had them on the cover. Once once the, gr- the Seattle grunge uh, explosion happened, we were getting requests. Every, every, literally every minute for Soundgarden, Pearl Jam, Nirvana. We didn't play any of that stuff, right? We, we had already decided that this is just mainstream. Just like Kurt himself supposedly dismissed Nevermind uh, because it didn't have the punk rock cred. You know, he's lying yeah. when he says that, right? He loved pop music. He loved oh, yeah. ABBA. He, he loved the monkeys. He, he talks about loving John Lennon because it's it's cool to love John Lennon, but you can't admit loving Paul McCartney, right? So yeah. all that stuff was bullshit. He loved Nirvana. That it, 90s mentality. Music. I right? remember it, it. It became very mainstream by that time, right? If you were a punk, if you wanted punk rock cred, you had to like disown Nevermind, right? I, I only listen to the most obscure bands that you've never heard of before. <laughs> you know, it could get that right. extreme in the underground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but, you know 
I mean, Kurt might have been listening to the mentors, right? Like, could have been listening to. Oh, him and Chris, uh, him, Chris, and Buzz Osborne had a mentors cover band. Well, there you go, right? So this Kurt, is the type of Kurt stuff. Played that, drum, Kurt played drums, and 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 uh, Buzz I played I remember, guitar. I think I remember this story. Yeah, is, that, isn't that, that crazy? Yeah, but again, you know, this is not the type of music Kurt would have loved. Kurt loved poppy music, right? So, which is why his music well, is so pop. And here's the thing. Everybody loves pop music. That's why it's pop. Exactly. You but know? you can't admit but, it, right? If you're in that punk rock scene, you can't like, admit it. You know, uh, Johnny Rotten could admit it, right? Sid Vicious could admit it. It was clear that they were influenced by, by that stuff too, which is why their stuff is so catchy, right? Uh, and the Ramones. But, he, you know, there was like, he, he wanted his punk rock cred. His old punk rock fans were, were dismissing never mind and he had sold out and that sort of thing right he loved being a star he loved the celebrity right like that that also became clear from meeting all these people that knew him before yes his, yes his that's fame. i can't stand to see people like kurt hated being famous he may but, have hated a lot of the pressure no, but he that but, that was his narrative right he had to peddle that bullshit right for for the sake of his own to, pop rock credibility right but none of that was true he because he didn't want to upset his first fans his original you're a musician fans. you're you're a musician who never made it big obviously right uh, but, i had but, one i had one chance to tour with a, a b-list band and i turned it down because i was going to become a dad <laughs> like like I was supposed to play the Hard Rock Cafe in New Orleans and then travel yeah. to China, and I literally turned it down uh, because I'm going to be a dad. So what okay. might have been right, but like yeah, you know, I would have opened for Bon Jovi, man, on their reunion. <laughs> but you would have killed to have been a famous rock star because who 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 doesn't want that when they're in a garage when you're young, whatever, right? Yeah. Exactly, right. So of course Kurt loved the the fame. I'm sure there's lots of. You know, there's the dark side of fame, obviously, as well, right? But, uh, but none of that stuff. That 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 was complete bullshit, right? Like a lot. Of that that's another sort of obstacle to trying to sort out the truth. You know, yeah. was he happy? Was he depressed? Was he, you know, right? Because it, there's it was so even many contradictory. Everybody focuses on Courtney's lies and her contradictions, but Kurt was like just telling huge amounts of lies as well and contradicting himself constantly. But I think it a lot really of it had to, to do with track. Courtney's influence. That's my own personal opinion. I think that yeah. she was a part of a lot of the contradictions. Johnny Depp, man, it, it must have been in the 90s. It must have been this way for actors, too, because Johnny Depp said in the 90s, you, you, it was not cool to like being famous. Now, now it's like you just want to be famous for the sake of being famous, and and people become famous overnight on TikTok or whatever. But back then, it, it wasn't just for musicians, uh, actors and actresses as well. You had to pretend that you didn't like it, right? Um, but 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 on the other hand, you know you know that they did like it, right? So of course, who a lot wouldn't? Of there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of bad things about you know not being ha being able to come out in public with, without being mobbed and that sort of thing, right? But uh like Beatlemania yeah. the, the, I'm sure the Beatles you know had a very good reason to stop touring eventually right but well look at what ended up happening to Lennon you know you make yourself accessible and uh yeah that that kind of fame maybe the kind of fame that Kurt experienced Nirvana mania maybe that was too much I, I don't think he liked that being swarmed everywhere but he certainly wanted people to respect his music and look up to him yeah yeah, and he was, and he was still well grounded. It it certainly didn't go to his head. Again, I spent he a lot of time yeah. talking to people who knew him from before and afterwards. Right, that's yeah. rare. that that's very rare for somebody to keep as grounded. So you know, then you hear him talking about how he was happier than he'd ever been in his life, and and so that proves that he wasn't depressed. Right, I still go back and forth to this day on whether that's true because you you hear a lot of that that's quite common with people who are super they'll you know they'll have a moment of clarity where all of a sudden they're happy because they've made up their mind right so um i but but i don't believe he so in fact i think the evidence is is fairly clear that he didn't so that's yeah. all that, that yeah. red hearing in itself well man max this has been a terrific conversation see here's the thing at this point in time, I'm going to be satisfied. And then later I'm going to be like, oh, I should have asked him this. I should have asked him that. Right. It happens to me every time. 
It happens to all of us, that's for sure. Yeah. Or I I just want to make sure we did go we went over everybody that was in your book. Is there anything you wanted to add? Mm, I think we covered covered most of it, yeah. I'll I'll just cut out things that need to be cut out and right. maybe there'll be pictures on the screen. Yeah, a yeah. picture of Alan Wrench, you know, whatever. Um I, do you have a picture of Alan Wrench? I have a couple. I forget really if we really... used one in our book. I think we, I think we used a photo of Alan Wrench in our book, but I don't remember now. It's not like the old days. You didn't have an iPhone that you could just take out and take unlimited photos, right? So, I know it. I that... wish I, I wish I had a photo of El Duce, of meeting El Duce, a selfie with El Duce, right? That would right, be cool. But right. I was on. I was supposed to be on TV. I was supposed to be on hard copy with him. But they ended up never running it. I'm not. Sh I still don't exactly know why. How strange. I know, passed, How strange! I know he passed his polygraph test, but it's probably their lawyers. Almost certainly their lawyers uh, nixed are, it. Are, are you saying they recorded it but never showed it, or they just never? They definitely recorded me. I was on hard copy, and Eldon Hoke was on hard copy, and they, they just never the ran the polygraph. Episode. So I'm almost positive that their lawyer said this is too um, inflammatory. You know, you can't accuse somebody of commissioning a murder. I don't know. I mean, if and he's doing if he's doing it and he passed a polygraph test, yeah, but it's still it's still potentially libelous, right? So the lawyers, I, I, this is before the book came out. This is at that time, yeah, yeah. At, at that, that time, time, it would have still been. It would have made network lawyers quite nervous i i think i understand why they didn't stop. yeah 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 it, it, and if that happened today they they would have ran it because years later it. we were on dateline nbc and the today show right talking right about this stuff and nobody tried to stop us or tell us what we couldn't say about courtney right so the the tenor changed at some point yeah yeah uh, that's a that's Really I'm sucks. glad. I, I, I mean, hard copy. Looking back, hard copy has no credibility. It was a tabloid trash show, right? So I was excited to be on it at the time. But looking it's back, inter it's interesting though that they I went to that copy. length. You know, they're 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 supposedly a tabloid trash show, but they went to that length to hire an FBI guy to give him a polygraph because their lawyers money. probably told them they can't they can't have somebody like uh, Eldon Hoke without uh, without uh, evidence, right? Something they, they got nervous, yeah. But Unsolved Mysteries did a did a piece. I think that was the first mainstream, very credible network piece that that delved into it. But they they kept out a lot of stuff about Courtney, right? It was just more. Yeah, mainstream. Grant said they they edited him real bad. Yeah, yeah. But also because of the lawyers, right? Like the lawyers would have been very nervous at that time. Right. right? But then years later, that's I think NBC, right? And we're on NBC He's talking about the murder theory and Courtney. I think we talked about Courtney a lot, but I, I don't even remember if the Today Show had us thought they were going to run those tapes of Rosemary I, Cattell, and I've they, seen a, a episode, I think it was Como News and the Pacific Northwest. Yeah, You guys were on and they played some uh, recordings that Tom had and it was very interesting. Yeah, I think, yeah. That, I think I've actually used clips and videos, and my, my ad revenue would have went to that news channel. <laughs> oh, you have to pay for that stuff? Yeah, whenever, even if it's from the 90s, they'll take your ad revenue. Wow. Every time I use any music or clips, the yeah. ad revenue gets rerouted to the copyright holder. Interesting. Um, Is that a um, YouTube policy? Yeah. Okay. Uh, now, they are coming out with a new <laughs> policy really soon where you regular content creators can license copyrighted material. So it's you can still actually expensive. It's still you have to still have to pay, right? Like right. That, so it's yeah, only yeah. worth it if you would make more exactly. ad revenue than it would cost yeah. to license it. Uh, but like I said, the more subscribers you get, the more people are going to be wanting to latch on, right? I constantly get people saying, "I I just found your channel. I just exactly found it, it, you know? no exactly." So you should be cross promoting as much as possible. That's all free, right? Like somebody keeps talking about Charlie Elliott says this, but doesn't post a link to your to your show so oh that's a you bummer could, you could be doing that it's just ooh, a Facebook ooh. Group. anybody could do that youtube just added what they call handles so now if anyone types at american spy fox it, it'll be a link and it'll go right to my channel oh so that's I can just, good yeah 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 that's handy yeah, yeah. okay max, well thanks for I having really me yeah I, I absolutely enjoyed our conversation max wallace author of love and death 
The Murder of Kurt Cobain, and numerous other books, by the way, and too many achievements for me to say right now. Uh, I still yeah, I mean, now I'm an historian that does serious historical uh, uh, research, right? But at that time, I was, uh, I was, I would still consider myself a music journalist, right? So, in the '90s, now, right, I, I sort of try to stay away from all that stuff, right, because it ruins my credibility for for other other topics, for right? other ventures, right? Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so that's going to conclude our conversation. Everybody take the time to comment. Thank Max Wallace for being on the channel. I really appreciated your time. I like, can't tell you how much I appreciated your time. Uh, I realize that this is an old case for you. You've actually opened my eyes to, to several different details that I was unaware about. I don't know why you would, but if you ever wanted to chat in the future, I would do it again. I'm sure there's okay. even more that we could you know, turn over. You never know. I'll but, definitely I'll definitely come on if the case ever gets reopened. That's a promise. Conclusion. Was Kurt Cobain murdered? Oh, there's no question about it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, see you in the next video.